Hello, sixth graders, and welcome to chapter seven, which is going to be an introduction to chemistry. Um, I know we skipped a couple chapters, but we will get back to those later in the springtime, uh, just kind of with how the schedule worked, it made a little more sense. So we're kind of just getting an introduction here to some of the concepts associated with chemistry. So first thing, um, and it's kind of a lot of new terminology, and it's easy to get kind of these different parts confused. So I want to try to explain as good as well as possible, give you plenty of examples to work with. Um, but some of the basis of chemistry is atoms, elements, and compounds. So atoms, these are the smallest piece of really anything that we're going to work with. It's something that makes up all matter. So everything is made up of atoms. Everything that you can touch, feel is made up of atoms. So it's the smallest piece of really anything. Um, but here I put smallest piece of an element because in elements, those are the things that we'd find on the periodic table. So that's things like oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, helium, gold, silver. So an element is made up entirely of only one type of atom. So it's for example, gold is made up of all of atoms of gold, or oxygen is made up of all oxygen atoms. Um, so atoms, those are the smallest thing, the smallest uh, unit that makes up all matter. Elements then are made entirely of one atom. Compounds combine two or more elements. So in this picture in the bottom, you can see helium, is an element oxygen is an element but they're both made of individual atoms or molecules um, and we're not really going to go into molecules so just for the sake of this uh, chapter we're just going to focus on atoms elements compounds and compound there you can see in the right where we have two hydrogen atoms bonding with one oxygen atom so we have two different types of elements making a compound i know we have three things there but we have hydrogen so we have two hydrogens, which is one element, and oxygen, which is another element, to make our compound. So think about like compound, like a compound sentence. Um, it's basically two sentences, two or more sentences put together. So compound, two or more things put together. So again, kind of talking through our examples, oxygen is an element. It is made up of only oxygen atoms. These are the smaller individual units of the element. Whereas carbon dioxide, CO2, is a compound, is made up of carbon, which is an element, and oxygen, another element. And a good way to tell here, so we see two capital letters, right? We see a C and an O. So these two capital letters are an indication if we have two or more capital letters, it's a compound. Now, it has to be capital because some elements, their abbreviation has two letters or more letters in it by itself. And then here, this picture at the bottom, we can kind of see. So this is what an atom looks like. We're going to go into more details about the atom. But atoms, all of the same kind, make up elements, such as helium or oxygen. And then two or more elements, such as in water, is a compound, is made up of hydrogens and an oxygen. So two or more different types of elements. So like I said, we're going to get back to the atom. We're going to focus a little more on each group individually. So an atom, these are the smallest things, basically smallest pieces that make up all living and non-living things. So an atom contains a nucleus here in the center that just kind of holds in our protons and our neutrons. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons have no charge or a neutral charge. So think neutral, neutron, proton, positive, um, which then be, makes it tough because we have electrons that go around. They kind of travel. Um, it's kind of a random path, actually. So it's not quite like this picture shows. It's not really how planets orbit the sun, but it's more like just like a constant movement, scattered movement around our nucleus. So electrons have a negative charge. A lot of people mistake 
electrons and neutrons. They get them mixed up because that N really throws them off. So the N and neutron, neutral. Neutrons, neutral or no charge. Electrons are actually our negative charge. So protons, neutrons, electrons. Um, and this is a good picture here of just kind of the movement. So atoms are always moving. There's always some form of movement. You might, it's very small movement. A lot of it we don't detect typically. Um, but everything that's living and non-living that you can like touch, feel, so forth is made up of atoms. So we're made of atoms, plants, animals. Uh, your desk table is made of atoms. Metal, uh, the beeve, all are made of atoms. So we see we have our protons and neutrons here in the middle, and then we have electrons that are kind of going around outside, um, which is weird to think about because, you know, when you touch something, it's not like you can poke your finger through that gap. So I'm going to go back to this picture here. You can't just like poke your finger in between the electrons and feel the protons, neutrons. And it's really weird to think about like, like solid objects are made up of all these little pieces yet it still feels like one giant chunk of something. Um, part of that is because of just how many atoms are in a, each thing. So to put it into perspective, a grain of salt, so one single grain of salt has approximately 1.2 times 10 to the 18 atoms. I don't even know the name for this number here, but so that's a lot of atoms just in one grain of salt. So why, article, or so why um, objects feel solid I'm going to go to this article right here. Um, it's actually like a really cool, interesting read. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just kind of bits and pieces here. So we can see that everything is made up of particles called atoms. Okay. So they, they are incredibly small. So in, and basically we have a nucleus in the center that has our protons, neutrons, and then we have electrons that kind of dance around it. Um, the question here is, so why don't our fingers just pass through atoms and why doesn't light get through the gap? So why don't we, why can't we like shine light through a table? Because it's just made up of individual pieces. Why can't we touch it? Um, so to explain why we must look at the electrons. Um, so like I said before, electrons do not orbit uh, the center of the atom like planets around the sun. Um, instead, think of it like a swarm of bees or birds where it's just the motion's too fast to track, but you can still see the overall shape and swarm. So electrons they kind of dance basically around the nucleus. Um, so they keep the movement of the electrons. So we know they're always moving, always having some form of orbit movement. They're... Um, they contain energy of some form, basically. And so an energy in the form of light or touch or anything touches these electrons, touches them. It actually absorbs that, um, reflects it back. And so that's why it happens when you touch it, that pressure of the electrons pushing together or of the light being reflected off is actually what gives it its appearance. So why it feels solid, um, if you touch the table, electrons from atoms in your fingers come close to the electrons in the table's atoms. If they get close enough, they change, and then it basically it pushes back with enough energy that it causes it to feel solid or to make it solid. Um, just why there's like no give. So there's enough atoms. Remember that we have that many atoms just in a grain of salt. So think about how many more atoms would be in a table and you push enough things together, it's going to resist the movement. So kind of weird to think about um, and not something that we're going to spend a lot of time on, but just in case that thought ever crossed your mind. Um, so here we have elements, oxygen, hydrogen, gold, silver. These are more examples. So anything on the periodic table are elements. One kind of atom, compounds, two or more kinds of atoms, like we said. Some common examples of compounds. So carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, copper chloride, sugar. So anything with two or more capital letters in the chemical formula. 